The prehistoric Korea is the era of human existence in the Korean peninsula for which written records did not exist. It, however, constitutes the greatest segment of the Korean past and is the major object of study in the disciplines of archaeology, geology, and paleontology. Geological Prehistory Geological prehistory is the most ancient part of Korea's past. The oldest rocks in Korea date to the Precambrian. The Yunchen system corresponds to the Precambrian and is distributed around Seoul extending out to Yunchen Gun in a northeasterly direction. It is divided into upper and lower parts and is composed of biotite, quartz feldspar schist, marble, lime silicate, quartzite, graphite schist. Mica quartz feldspar schist, mica schist, quartzite, organ gneiss, and garnet bearing granitic gneiss. The Korean peninsula had an active geological prehistory through the Mesozoic, when many mountain ranges were formed, and slowly became more stable in the Cenozoic. Major Mesozoic formations include the Jiangsang Supergroup, a series of geological episodes in which biotite, granites, shales, sandstones, conglomerates, andesite, basalt, rhyolite, and tuff that were laid down over most of present-day Jiangsangdu province. The remainder of this article describes the human prehistory of the Korean peninsula. Periodization Historians in Korea use the three-age system to classify Korean prehistory. The three-age system was applied during the post-imperial Japanese colonization period as a way to refute the claims of imperial Japanese colonial archaeologists who insisted that Unlike Japan, Korea had no Bronze Age. This Almany Weorjuman pottery period 8000-1500 BC incipient 8000-6000 BC early 6000-3500 BCE middle 3500-2000 BCE late 2000-1500-1000 BCE. Moo Moon Pottery Period 1500 1000 to 300 BCE. Samhain, Proto Three Kingdoms Period 100 BCE to 300 CE. There are some problems with the three age system applied to the situation in Korea. This terminology was created for the situation in prehistoric Europe where sedentism, pottery, and agriculture go together to characterize the Neolithic stage. The periodization scheme used by Korean archaeologists proposes that the Neolithic began in 8000 BCE and lasted until 1500 BCE. This is despite the fact that paleoethnobotanical studies indicate that the first bona fide cultivation did not begin until circa 3500 BCE. The period of 8000 to 3500 BCE corresponds to the Mesolithic cultural stage dominated by hunting and gathering of both terrestrial and marine resources. Korean archaeologists traditionally used a date of 1500 or 1000 BCE as the beginning of the Bronze Age. This is in spite of bronze technology not being adopted in the southern portion of the Korean peninsula until circa 700 BCE, and the archaeological record indicates that bronze objects were not used in relatively large numbers until after 400 BCE. This does leave Korea with a proper Bronze Age, albeit a relatively short one. Bronze metallurgy beginning to be replaced by ferrous metallurgy soon after it had become widespread. Paleolithic The origins of this period are an open question but the antiquity of hominid occupation in Korea may date to as early as 500,000 BCE. Ian Clark are somewhat skeptical of dating the earliest occupation to the Lower Paleolithic. At Siokjang Ri, an archaeological site near Gongju, Chungcheong Namdu Province, artifacts that appear to have an affinity with lower Paleolithic stone tools were unearthed in the lower levels of the site. Bifacial chopper or chopping tools were also excavated. Hand axes and cleavers produced by men in later eras were also uncovered. From Jumal Cave at all, possibly for hunting, made from the radius of a hominid was unearthed, along with hunting and food preparation tools of animal bones. 
the shells of nuts collected for nourishment were also uncovered. In Siok Jangri and in other riverine sites, stone tools were found with definite traces of Paleolithic tradition, made of fine-grain rocks such as quartzite, porphyry, obsidian, chert, and felsite manifest Hishulian, mousteroid, and Laval Louisian characteristics. Those of the chopper tradition are of simpler in shape and chipped from quartz and pegmatite. Siok Jangri's middle layers showed that humans hunted with these bowler or missile stones. During the Middle Paleolithic period, humans dwelt in caves at the Jermal site near Jechen and at the Durabong site near Cheongju. From these two cave sites, fossil remains of rhinoceros, cave bear, brown bear, hyena and numerous deer, all extinct species, were excavated. The earliest radiocarbon dates for the Paleolithic indicate the antiquity of occupation on the Korean peninsula as between 40,000 and 30,000 BP. From an interesting habitation site at locality 1 at Siok Jangri, excavators claim that they excavated some human hairs of mongoloid origin along with limonitic and manganese pigments near and around a half as well as animal figurines such as a dog, tortoise and bear made of rock. Reports claim that these were carbon dated to some 20,000 years ago. The Paleolithic ends when pottery production begins c. 8000 BCE, Juman pottery period. The earliest known Korean pottery dates back to c. 8000 BCE or before. This pottery is known as Yongji Moon pottery is found in much of the peninsula. Some examples of Yongji Moon era sites are Garzan Ri in Jeju Do and Nabong Ri in Greater Elson. Juman or comb pattern pottery is found after 7000 BCE. C, and pottery with comb patterns over the whole vessel is found concentrated at sites in West Central Korea between 3500-2000 BC, a time when a number of settlements such as Amzadong and Chitimni existed. Juman pottery bears basic design and form similarities to that of the Russian maritime province, Mongolia, and the Amur and Sungari river basins of Manchuria and the Jomon culture in Japan. The people of the Juman practiced a broad-spectrum economy of hunting, gathering, foraging, and small-scale cultivation of wild plants. It was during the Juman that the cultivation of militant rice was introduced to the Korean peninsula from the Asian continent. Mu Moon Pottery Period Agricultural societies and the earliest forms of social political complexity emerged in the Mu Moon Pottery Period. People in southern Korea adopted intensive dry fields and paddy field agriculture with a multitude of crops in the early Mu Moon Period. The first societies led by chiefs emerged in the middle Mu Moon, and the first ostentatious elite burials can be traced to the late Mu Moon. Bronze production began in the middle Mu Moon and became increasingly important in Mu Moon ceremonial and political society after 700 BCE. The Mu Moon is the first time that villages rose, became large, and then fell. Some important examples include Songgungni, Dipayong, and Ajiam Dong. The increasing presence of long-distance exchange, an increase in local conflicts, and the introduction of bronze and iron metallurgy are trends denoting the end of the Mu Moon around 300 BCE. The Bronze Age reaches Korea beginning about 800 BCE, by a Chinese transmission. Bronze metallurgy does not become widespread until the 4th century BC and soon gives way to the transition to a ferrous metallurgy, complete by about the 1st century BCE, Iron Age. The transition from the Late Bronze to Early Iron Age in Korea begins in the 4th century BCE. The period that begins after 300 BCE can be described as proto-historic a time when some documentary sources seem to describe sociites in the Korean peninsula. The historical polities described in ancient texts such as the Samguk Sagi are an example.
The historical period in Korea begins in the late 4th to mid-5th centuries, when as a result of the transmission of Buddhism, the Korean Three Kingdoms adopted Chinese writing to produce the earliest records in Old Korean mythological prehistory. Ancient texts such as the Samguk Sagi, Samguk Yusa, Book of Later Han, and others have sometimes been used to interpret segments of Korean prehistory. The most well-known version of the founding legend that relates the origins of the Korean ethnicity explains that Dangun came to the earth in 2333 BCE. While however, evidence has been found that supports whatever facts may lie beneath this myth, a significant amount of historical inquiry in the 20th century was devoted to the interpretation of the accounts of Gojoseon, Gija Hoseon, Wiman Hoseon, and others mentioned in historical texts.